Certainly, here is the text, rewritten in English with correct punctuation, spelling, and formatting. There's a lot of talk about sending humans to Mars. But no one talks about Venus. Why not? And could Venus actually be the better option for a human colony? Going to Mars has been a fixture in our collective cultural consciousness for a very long time. It's inspired more sci-fi movies and stories than I can count, a ride at Disney World, and a Twitter following for the Mars rover that's almost two million strong. Meanwhile, Venus has inspired, what? Two Ray Bradbury stories, a plant that eats flies, and a razor? Basically, Venus has the worst public relations team in the solar system. And that hurts our sister planet, not just in culture and media but in space policy. Presidents Bush and Obama and the Chinese government have all outlined goals for manned missions to Mars. The Dutch non-profit group Mars One even held an international competition to find volunteers for a one, a mission to the Martian surface. But Venus. No manned mission love. Tall. Which is odd since in most respects, Venus is actually an easier and less costly colonization target than Mars is. For starters, Venus is closer to Earth. That's why we sent probes to Venus, long before we sent them to Mars and why we sent more of them. Depending on the launch window, the round trip can be 30 to 50 shorter, which is a major factor for manned missions. Shorter trips mean less weightlessness and radiation, less food and water to carry, and thus less fuel and lower cost. This would also be a huge advantage in moving the people and equipment necessary to actually colonize another world, because bear in mind, there's no Craigslist in space. If we ever start a colony, we'll need to bring along almost everything. And it's not just the shorter trip. The planet itself has some significant advantages over Mars. It's closer to the Sun, which means about four times more available solar power than you have on Mars. It also has a thick atmosphere, unlike that wispy layer on Mars. That means better protection from space radiation and meteorites for our enterprising colonizers and their future cities. It also means more available carbon dioxide from which, in principle, you might extract oxygen. But the real kicker is gravity. Venus has about zero. Nine Earth G's pretty close, while Mars has less than zero. Four. And one thing we do know is that prolonged low gravity is bad for humans. How bad? In Earth orbit, astronauts lose bone mass at about ten times the rate of someone with advanced osteoporosis. Now no one knows exactly how bad Martian gravity would be for humans, but it's definitely not going to be good. On Venus. That's far less of a concern. And remember, we're talking about long-term colonization, not just visits. Even if we have the technological means to add water to a planet's surface and oxygen to its air, changing the planet's surface gravity is currently not even within the realm of discussion. So terraforming seems silly if people couldn't live there more than a few months without their bones falling apart. A theoretical Venusian colony there seems to have a lot going for it. So why then this tunnel vision for Mars? Surfacism. Bogue. I just made that word up. But hear me out. Ever since the days of seafaring exploration, we've had an obsession with landing on the surface of things. If you don't plant a flag on something, it's almost like having gotten there doesn't count. So what's all this have to do with Venus, which actually has a solid surface? Well, it does, but humans can't land on it. See, there's a teensy problem with temperature. There's so much copy on Venus that the greenhouse effect makes the surface hotter than hell, of a 450 degrees Celsius, well above the melting point of lead. But the bigger problem is the barometric pressure on the surface. It's over 90 Earth atmospheres. That means that landing on the Venusian surface would be like diving one kilometer underwater on Earth, are beyond the crush depth of most military submarines. In fact, most probes that NASA and the Soviets sent to the surface of Venus imploded in midair. We learned our lesson, and a few reinforced probes did manage to touch down and send images of the Venusian surface. But even those only lasted about two hours before sound of an implosion, you know. The point is I think surfacism is a real bias and the fact that we can't live on the Venusian surface could help explain why Mars gets all the hype. But maybe that's sensible. I mean, if a surface will kill us, there's no point in going there, right? Not so fast. See, around 50 kilometers or 30 miles above the Venusian surface, some interesting things happen. First, the temperature drops to only about 70 degrees Celsius. That's still super hot, 
but firefighting equipment on Earth can withstand proximity to forest fires with temperatures that reach over 2,000 degrees Celsius. The pressure at that altitude also drops to almost exactly one Earth atmosphere. That means humans would need heat, resistant clothing and oxygen masks, but not spacesuits to walk around in that environment. Granted, there's the minor nuisance of sulfuric acid floating around in the Venusian air, but that's potentially manageable. And at that altitude, the atmosphere is still dense enough for lots of stuff to float, like balloons filled with helium or maybe even filled with just regular Earth air. Throw in the favourable gravity, and it starts to look like the upper atmosphere of Venus might be the closest thing in the solar system to an Earth-like environment. So it might make sense to colonise Venus with cloud cities. I am not making this up. NASA's Systems Analysis and Concepts Directorate has unveiled a conceptual blueprint for this scheme. They call it the High Altitude Venus Operational Concept or Havoc Interesting Branding Choice, but still super awesome. We've linked the NASA videos in the description. You should check them out. Now for the record, this is all still conceptual. We are very far from sending this guy to lead our Venusian cloud city. But NASA is taking the idea seriously. Right now, most of the chatter is still about using Venus as practice for colonies elsewhere, like Mars. So we haven't overcome surfacism just yet. But this might change. The gravity issue alone might make Venus the go-to option for long, um, human habitation. Who knows? Centuries from now, if we learn how to sequester enough carbon out of its atmosphere, we might even be able to plant a flag or two. So what do you guys think? Is Venus a better colonization option than Mars? But your zero dollars. Two in the comments, or even better, tweet them. Occupy Venus. If we start a grassroots movement, I'll let you know on the next episode of Space Time. Last week, we asked how you measure the size of the universe. Here are some of your questions. Autism asked, how can space be expanding faster than light, if the speed of light is the ultimate speed limit? I'm going to answer you in two parts. First, the speed. Light speed limit is for things moving through space, not about the expansion of space itself. Second, you're right. I shouldn't be talking about space expanding at a given speed. I should be talking about the size of the enlarge setting on a photocopier button. If I hit enlarge once every second, then there will always be two points on the page that, if they're far enough apart to begin with, will end up more than one extra light, heck and apart after I hit that photocopier button. Ling Wingsing commented that this was a pretty intuitive way to understand inflation. Thanks for the compliment. But be careful. We're talking about the expansion of space in general. Inflation refers to a very specific expansion of space that occurred in just the first few instants after the Big Bang. The Matman 1313 says that the Hubble bubble is a possible alternative to the idea that space is expanding at all. That's not correct. Space is expanding, period. What the Hubble bubble offers is a potential alternative to the currently observed, accelerated expansion of space. Look it up. And to Brandon Spears, sure, we could always use help here at Space Time. Like the Hubble Space Telescope, we've got scmots on our lens too, so give it a wipe and help us out.